So today we are going to talk about Marguerite Lai. Can you just begin by telling me a little bit about her? She was born in Sweden and was really known as a Swedish beauty. She won Miss Sweden. She first started in fashion by studying under the designer who designed for the Swedish royal court. So that was her first experience in actually cutting and draping, and she was an apprentice to him. And so she learned a lot about seamstress techniques and her tailoring skills became developed. And she moved to Paris and became a model for the French couturier Jacques Spa and was in a lot of publications and well photographed. I've heard that she also worked for Christian, Christian Dior. I couldn't document that, but that's what people say. Then she put her skills to use when she went to work for Mondi, the German fashion house. She started Escada with her husband, Wolfgang. The name comes from the Portuguese word, which means staircase but she heard the name at a fashion shoot they were doing at a racetrack. So Escada comes from the name of racehorse, which is kind of interesting. In your opinion, what sets Marguerite Lai apart from other designers? She had a design aesthetic that was her own, which I always loved with designers. She really loved pattern. She loved bold colors and she wanted people who wore her clothes to be brave and confident. And I think she designed for women like that. So her clothing shows that, it, it speaks to that. Her designs are really driven by the color and the prints and the patterns, not to mention the quality, the quality is exceptional, but her prints were so unique and they were all her own prints. You know, a lot of designers will buy a print or use a pattern. And sometimes you'll see even two designers using the same one, but hers were all custom design patterns and prints and they were beautiful. For most of the prints she used novelty prints, she used a lot of novelty prints and mainly of things that she loved, horses, and she'll take a theme like clocks and do a whole blouse of clocks, but she also used a lot of plaid. She was known for her plaid. And when you think of a Scott, oftentimes you'll think of plaids, different colors and types of plaids, different combinations, but not in gray, always in bold, beautiful colors. She has this amazing quote, gray colors don't make a woman happy. And when everything was so gray for a while, I totally agreed with that. I, I felt so kind of dismal and gray. How do you believe she was able to achieve so much success with Escada? I think the key to her success was her buildable collection. She believed in collections that went together. So you would have a jacket, you'd have a blouse that could go with that jacket, but also could go with the last season's jacket. And she didn't think that women should have to recreate their wardrobe every single season. That's something that ethically we really believe in. And so a buildable collection would have a variety of blouses that would go with the same jacket, the same skirts, the same pants. Everything could be mixed and matched, and yet every look would be different. And I think that's one of the main cornerstones of her success. Fast fashion and trends are so big right now, and I guess you could say out of control. So what do you believe her thoughts would be? Or what do you think maybe she would do to try to change the industry if she was still alive? Well, I, I think she was the antithesis of fast fashion. Her clothing was expensive. and she designed for women who worked, who had um, money to spend on clothing, so it was made well, it was beautiful. She didn't really believe in disposable clothing, disposable seasons, disposable trends. Her clothing was made to last, as was a lot of clothing of that time. Who would be her ideal customer? In terms of her ideal customer, I think you have to look at the designer herself, because that's who she really designed for. She designed with herself in mind. And she was a woman who had money to spend on clothing. She worked up to 100 hours a week. She just didn't have time to worry about what she was going to wear. So she wanted to look beautiful and confident. She wanted to have bold colors and beautiful things to wear, but she didn't want to have to spend hours thinking in the morning, what will this go with? And so that's one of the reasons she made her collection work as it does. Escada didn't come to the United States until 1985. And so the first person I saw wearing it was probably in 1988. And I remember she walked into the room and I'd never seen anything like it. And it was all purple, the entire outfit. And she was a doctor of some sort. She had red hair and her outfit was so beautiful. It was so elegant looking. And I think that woman almost defined who she was designing for. Without the label, how could I tell if something was vintage Escada? Escada is pretty recognizable in the terms of the vintage world. The signature elements that I think most pieces have would be beautiful lining if it's a jacket. Oftentimes the lining is branded with the logo. The buttons are made of a really high quality metal, sometimes brass, sometimes gold plated. 
they usually have the Escada logo as well. The patterns themselves are so unique that if you see an Escada blouse, the silk is the highest quality. The patterns are everything from clocks to celebrities, people's faces. She did one that was a fashion print that I loved that we used to have. And when you see them, you know that must be Escada. And then again, as I mentioned before, the plaids are very recognizable. The structure of the garments, you can see her tailoring background. They're very well made. There is a beautiful finish to all the seams. You feel the cashmere, you feel the wool, you just know it's an Escada piece. How do you know if Marguerite Lai designed it? Well, the easiest way to tell would be to look at the label. The earliest label was Escada SRB. Initially, it was a knitwear company. So her sweaters are really recognizable and still are today. And they have a beautiful mohair or mohair blend. That's the earliest label. Then she went on to have different Escada labels with her name attached to them. And so if you look on the side of the label, it will say made in Germany or made in W Germany. If it says made in West Germany, you know that it was made before 1988, which would have definitely been one of her designs. Sometimes they're made in other countries, um, particularly if they did the cashmere type of blend. Once her name is taken off the label later on and it just says Escada, you know that's a modern Escada piece that was not designed by Marguerite Alive. Why do you think there is such a demand now for vintage Escada? I think people are now really starting to want to have a original fashion and unique pieces to wear. And I think when you see a lot of monochromatic tones and you see grayed versions of colors and everything, it was very muted for a long time. And then I think people wanted to stand out a little more and express themselves with their clothing. And I think her pieces are such a great way to do that because of the prints and the colors. And it just, they make you happy when you wear them. She also knew about tone, and I think some of her tones, the hues that she used in her pieces, they look good on people. They're made to make your face look brighter, they're made to make you feel better, and I think people want that now. Are there any misconceptions about Marguerite Talai? I don't think about the person herself. There aren't really any controversies. I think the biggest mis misconception about Escada, though, would be people today don't understand how expensive it was. And I think on the resale market, sometimes people think, oh, it's Escada, because the newer Escada isn't quite the same price point. But it was very expensive. People that wore it usually had quite a bit of money, and it was so well made. When we compare Escada pieces to couture or to some of our better known designer pieces, it's incredible to see the quality. I mean, you just, you can't beat it. It's just extremely well made. And it lasts. Having done this for so many years, I can tell you that there are some brands that were very expensive that don't stand the test of time and we get them and we see the wear in them. And whereas Escada pieces, they often look unworn, even if they've been worn for years. If this dress said Dior on it, imagine the price. And the quality is the same, if not better. If you had to pick one piece from the Modig collection, past or present, which of Margarita Lies is your favorite? I don't think I could pick one piece, but I could pick several. And the first would be the Andy Warhol inspired Marilyn Monroe's silk blouse that we sold a while back. I was sad to see that go. That's a really special piece. We had a nubby red jacket that was all different types of textures and it was one of the most unusual Escada pieces I've seen. And we sold that, which I really, really miss. We had a pair of green gloves that had studs on them. I loved those. She had great accessories because her whole design aesthetic was to completely dress the woman. And so like Frank Lord Wright would build a house and also provide the china and the curtains. He'd want to do the whole thing. She felt that way about dressing. So if we have a scarf, it would go with the jewelry, it would go with the purse, it would go with the shoes, everything. So I think some of the little accessories that we've sold have been amazing. And then we had a red jacket. I know a cropped red jacket with studs. That was exceptional. She did great leathers. In our current inventory, we have a silver outfit that has a skirt, pants, and a cropped fitted jacket. I love that. And we have a plaid taffeta three-piece vest, blouse, and pants ensemble that I love. Audrey loves the apple pants, which are such a fun print. And Katie loves the quilted jacket that has a skirt that comes with it. It's just beautiful. And the quilting, it's satin. It's just so beautiful. Some things don't show as well in photographs. And so that's one of the pieces I think that outfit deserves a second look. It's incredible. If you had to choose a cultural icon, living or dead, that best embodies her design aesthetic, who would it be and why? I would have to say Princess Diana. I think she wore Escada so well. And if you think of Princess Diana, you can see her in those oversized plaid blazers and the sweaters and 
she really, she used to shop at the Escada store in London. So her design aesthetic fits Escada. And I think today, anyone who loves men's wear type of blazers, anyone who loves oversized jackets, if you love beautiful prints, I mean, I can almost see an Escada piece that would work for any personality. Her range is so wide. Mostly you just have to love beautiful, full, bright colors and you have to love good quality. Is there anything else that you think is important to know about Margarita Lai that we haven't talked about already? Well, I think any designer who designs things with a particular customer in mind and knows that customer so well does a great service because then that customer feels seen and recognizes themselves in the clothes. And I think she was just a great designer with a great sense of humor. I think it's actually really a shame that we didn't have more years with Margarita designing because I think she would have come up with even more incredible things and she would have moved with the times. And so it's just nice to see that her pieces are now so valued and that people appreciate her design aesthetic. If you were at a dinner party with Margarita Lai and you could ask her one question, what would it be? I think I would ask her, what designers do you see today that are doing things that are bold and unique and designing for the same woman that you were designing for? Who have you admired? Because I think she died at a time before people like Versace and Terry Mugler and all these people really came into their own or were starting to really become famous. And I think they used a lot of interesting, unique things that I think she would have appreciated. But I'd like to hear it from her. Like, who do you admire? Who do you think is doing it right? And I think I would ask her take on ethical fashion, how she thinks the world might start to understand why that's so important.